Hi, Dave. I know that uh, you talked a little bit about this before um, on the national network scene, but how are you and your team, how are you guys viewing this particular three-game series with a, uh, a formidable division opponent? Um, it, it's, it's a big series. Uh, this is a team that's, you know, been closing in on us the last month and a half. Um, they're playing really great baseball. Uh, it's three games here at their place. Ser season series so far has been pretty much even. And, um, you know, our goal is to play good baseball and, and as a result win the division. So this is kind of, uh, you know, part of the process. So um, I, I know our guys uh, just was in the clubhouse and really excited. The energy's up and uh, there's a good focus. Are you looking forward to the pitching matchup tonight? Obviously, we know what you guys have in Clayton Kershaw, but also on the other side, um, you know, could be could prove to be a pitcher's duel and, and two of the best going right now. Yeah, uh, I mean, Lamette's got a really good arm. Um, he, he's uh, one of their guys. They've got a really good starting staff now. Um, you know, it, it's going to be mid to upper 90s all night long, and uh, it's going to be 50% slider as well, from the, to the lefty to the righty. So, um you know, hoping to try to capitalize on some mistakes. But as far as stuff, it, it's, uh, you know, top tier starter stuff. Uh, we have Barnes catching Kershaw tonight, which is uh, normally how it goes with the exception of Kershaw's last outing. Anything to that with Barnesy back behind the plate this time? Um, no, not really. I, I think that obviously him and uh, Clayton have a good uh, chemistry rapport. Um, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, Will – catches Clayton because, you know, as we go forward and look out, um, I, I can't predict how things are going to be. But I think that to have some familiarity with both catches is important to, to the pitcher. Um, but right now, I, I think that I, I can see Austin, you know, catching him this turn and, as well as his next, his last turn. Um, any update on Justin Turner, what, when he might be activated? Well, uh, he's um, going through the regular, you know, routine today. Um, our hope is to activate them tomorrow. So I don't know the necessary regulations, but I think that if we're planning on activating him tomorrow, he can kind of go through the day with us on the field. So hopefully that's the case. Um, but if all goes well today, I, I, I hope to have him as a DH tomorrow. And finally for me, Dave, um, Major League Baseball, or it is reported that Major League Baseball may have you guys have dry celebrations as far as the postseason is concerned. No alcohol because of just because of 2020. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I, I get the uh, the social distancing part of it. I don't know how much correlation there is to the alcohol for adults uh, in a room, but um, I, I'm, I hope we get what's that, three or four celebrations and a chance to have non-alcoholic celebrations. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. Next question is from Dave Asego. Dave. Dave, before yesterday's game, I saw you give Max Muncy kind of a hug and some words of encouragement. Where is he at right now? And do you feel like frustration is now at the forefront more than mechanics and approach and all that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think that Max is, uh, he's grinding. Um, it, it's just the frustration part of it is that he hasn't had his uh, swing mechanics, all that stuff consistent for an extended period of time this season. So I think that's the frustrating part. Um, I just wanted to reiterate how confident I am in him to take good, good at bats and to not chase numbers. Um, but I do see here um, in the next three, four days, I can see him getting a day off, just give him a, giving him a blow to watch a baseball game. Um, but you know what, he's, he's doing great. It's a grind, it's a different season, but I have all the confidence that it, it'll show itself in the postseason the way it's supposed to. With 13 games to go, what is reasonable expectations for him and Cody? What, what do you need from those two guys the, the last few games of this season? Well, I, I think that you can put Jock in that bucket too. Um, I don't think it's a numbers thing for me. I think it's it's more of it, this is an eye test. I, I think for the last 13 games, and you know, I don't need numbers to see if he's controlling the strike, if they're controlling the strike zone, um, if they're using the whole field, if they're you know, ending the at bat at the appropriate time when they can get a pitch that they can handle. So for me, that's 
more what I'm looking for going into the postseason. And just an update on Dustin May. Uh, it seemed like he went through everything okay yesterday. Are you more confident that he could start on Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. Um, everything I've seen, everything I've heard, uh, talking to Dustin himself, uh, we have every confidence that he'll make that start on Wednesday. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Next question from Mario Castillo. Go ahead. Hey, Dave, you mentioned Jock. Um, he's batting third today. I know he has some success in, I think, nine plate appearances against Lamette. Um, just is it a matter of that, and is it a matter of wanting him to snap out of this against the guy he's been good against? It's more lineup construction, um, and he has had some success against Lamette. Um, but the lineup construction in the sense of as we get around to the third time, um, having Jock take that third of bat against the right-handed pitcher or them – going to the pen and uh, me having the option to Pollock and Kiki on the bench. So um, it, it's more of a, of a game, uh, individual game, line of construction strategy. And staying on that, um, the line of construction, obviously with, with Justin coming back tomorrow, um, will tomorrow, will we see more of like what you envision in the postseason to be your lineup starting tomorrow, maybe over the next, the final 11 games or so, will you, will you start sort of figuring that out? Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. And just lastly, um, you mentioned, you know, this is a big series. You think it's, it's, it's a really good thing to have this kind of series so close to the postseason to maybe conjure up some excitement in a kind of a weird environment with no fans and kind of figuring out how, how it's going to be in just less, I mean, in two weeks when you guys are playing games that, that matter. I think so, yeah. I mean, I, I really I, – I think that, you know, anytime you can play meaningful baseball in the regular season, that's a good thing. Um, look back at the last four years we haven't really had to go down to the wire to win the division um so i think that having a two and a half game lead with i think 13 games for us to be played uh it's a good thing and so i would expect this series and you know even the series in colorado the, these are big series so i just want us to be playing obviously i mean we all say it our, our best baseball as we get into the postseason thank you yeah next question from bryce miller go ahead Hey, Dave, Bryce down at the Union Tribune. Um, the Padres were historically aggressive at the trade deadline. How much ground did they gain on you guys potentially by being that aggressive and, and moving and, and, and gaining new parts? Um, yeah, they, they uh, you know, they, they gain ground. I mean, I think if you look at the roster, um, you know, losing some pieces in the pen, uh, namely Yates, and to, you know, uh, supplant him. Uh, with Rosenthal, uh, who's really throwing the baseball well, um, to get Moreland to add some depth where you ultimately lost Hosmer, uh, but he's going to be back um, to get Clevenger um, to add to the rotation. So certainly they close the gap. So now it's about, um, you know, both teams playing, playing baseball and, and which team's going to come out in front. What, as you look at the, the new look rotation that they have, especially with Clevenger and, and Lamette really coming into his own and uh, some of the parts that are moving up and down in that rotation, how different do they look on a day-to-day -day basis with that staff? Uh, you know, it, it's been a good staff. It, it really has. I, I think that, um, but obviously when you add a top of end rotation guy um, and Clevenger, it certainly adds to the, to the confidence of, of the ball club. Um, but at the end of the day, the statistics, the, the roster on paper, um, you still got to play the game. So that's where I, I know that we've played in a lot of big games, a lot of big series. So you know, I'm looking forward to this. Got time for one more. Go ahead, Eric. Dave, some of the reports um, about the you know potential playoff locations and all that have teams in the final week of the regular season going into um, quarantine. You guys are home next week, but are you really home? Like, have you are, are you basically in a hotel from this point out? Um, once we get home, um, there's talk about being in a bubble once we get home to sort of quarantine together before we um, start the postseason. Um, Eric, I don't know what it is ultimately. I hope it comes to some resolution soon because players, coaches, people have families to kind of thing through logistics. So um, I, I just want something to be definitive sooner than later. Thanks. Thanks, guys.